Welcome to the review of Food Fight. I'm speaking of the bulletin board system game that was created for DOS by Michael Wilson. BBS's were pre-internet and basically every single server had its own message system, games, and users. None of it was connected like it is today. So the goal of Food Fight is to try to win, of course, by fighting against other players on the bulletin board system. You try to do as much damage as you can by throwing food. There's all kinds of settings controlled by the sysop or the system operator. For example here you can only play one time per day based on these settings. But some of the game configuration information such as the type of food that's thrown the damage it does, cost, hit percent chance, all of that is controllable once again by the system operator. The sysop also controls when the game is actually won, such in this case we have 5,000 points determines a win. There's also a lottery built into the game. You can control whether or not players can steal or hire spies, and how much that costs and how much money they start with. So there's all kinds of different settings made for a fun time in the 80s. The sysop could also control a real-world prize and specify what that is so that all players know what they're going for. So the way bulletin board systems work is when a user logs in, of course in those days they would dial up with a dial-up modem, they had their own account. So the Food Fight game looks at this information and knows who is logged in. So all the settings applies just to that one particular user. In this case, since we start with $20, we can go to the food store and begin trying to buy some food to fight with. Of course, it's really hard when you're first going if the settings are that low because you just can't buy enough ammunition to take out enemies. So as we start gaining more money, in this case we have $195, you can get the more expensive and more effective weapons such as in this case the watermelon. There's also protection that can be purchased by players which allows them to take reduced damage but it can only absorb so much damage before the defense is actually destroyed. The amount of damage absorbed is actually percentage based which means it's more effective against the heavier attack type weapons. Now since money is so hard to come by, this particular version, which is 4.6.1, allows you to look for money. So here we looked for money in the street when we found $20, but then we tripped and lost all of our food that we had already had. Which is kind of funny, the situations you can end up with in this game. Here's an example of finding money in an alley. So we found $20, but then we were robbed. Or here, we're looking in the street. Here's the parking lot. And even your pockets can be searched. $20 in your pockets, WTF. And of course, the sysop can control how many times you can look for money per day. There is the lottery, as I mentioned, which of course you have to have money to play that as opposed to just trying to find money. You don't have much to start with, and it's a big gamble. But here, for example, we're going to buy a block of tickets. The max you could buy is five. And you just enter in a four-digit number, and it gives you a reward based on how many matches you have. You also have the ability to steal from other players. You can steal food and money that they didn't load into a bank account. Incidentally, for those of you who have never experienced a BBS, since this is pre-internet, there was no use of a mouse. You had to actually type a character to be sent over to the server for everything. So, once you go to steal, if you don't have a spy, you have the ability to buy one. 
which increases your chance of stealing by 10%. And it also shows you what other players have. For example, Steve has no money, but he has two food. So here we can type in who we want to steal from. And then we'll say we want to go for some food. And we stole one salaries. Now there is a chance that you can get busted and caught when you try to steal, such as in this case. And you're presented with this nice little ASCII art over there. And we lost all of our money and we lost a lot of points. So of course this was very risky to do. You also have the ability to steal from the bank vault or the general funds. And it gives us a warning before we do it. So we say yes, go ahead and continue. And we're presented with this nice little narrative on what happens. And then we're presented with a countdown till our dynamite blasts open the safe. Boom! You did it! You blew the vault! You dig through the rubble and pick up $196. The game also had the ability where you could leave a message as you left for the next person to log in. Remember this is pre-internet so email didn't really exist yet. You'd have to log on to particular servers to get messages. So here's a, what happens when the next person logs on. But of course this game is all about food fights. So let's get to the combat. So you choose the player you want to fight against. And then you have options on the types of arsenal you want to throw. You just simply hit the letter of the food you have. And the random chance goes into action. So here we threw a banana, got a hit and they had protection but you'll notice the score went up to five for me and Steve's went down to minus four so every time you hit your score goes up and every time your opponent gets hit their score goes down they can actually even catch food and throw it back at you which is what just happened to me once your score goes down so negative your character will actually be reset in this case it's set to minus 5,000. So what that means is the only real way to kill a player is to make their score go so low that their character gets reset. So after combat and you leave, you have the ability to leave a message for the player. A lot of times you could say something in a taunting manner. Yeah, this was the first trolling way before the internet. You can also send private messages directly to someone. It's kind of like sending it directly to an inbox. Lots of fun. Strangely enough, you can actually send a message to yourself. And the next time you log in, you will see your own message. So the system operator can also broadcast a message that displays every single time someone logs in. And then eventually they can shut that off by doing an end broadcast message. Here's an example of something that might be said. Ah, those were the days. You skip school to stay home and play food fight. Here's what you see the next time you log in. The system operator message followed by any private messages. So eventually you start to make more and more money if you're good enough in the game. And you get some really powerful equipment such as this watermelon. Massive amounts of damage. My score just went up by about 150 points. So this would actually allow you to gang up on someone, which was kind of fun. So if there was one particular person, all the little guys could go against 
the one guy that had everything going for him and potentially take him out. You have the ability to look at the score to see how everyone's doing in the last time they played. And there's also bank accounts. Here you can see a bug where it says I have minus $25,164. That's because it overflowed. And interestingly enough, sometimes it shows properly. It'll show I have 65000 Other times it shows the negative. So the game is quite buggy. So anyway, with accounts, you just have to say what you're depositing, whether it's money or food. So first we have to open the account. And then you choose an account number. You have to remember this account number in order to get back in. Then we're prompted with depositing money or food. Which once again, this just helps protect you from someone stealing from you. I tried to do $10,000, but that went past the limit. So I did 5000 and it worked fine. There's also a log of activity so that you can see what happened. And you can do it by date or today's date or show everything. And it's a play-by-play -play of all the action. It's pretty cool. The game does have quite a few bugs, like I mentioned. In this case, I had the system operator try to zap or permanently delete a player. And it said, the bank way too busy to help you right now. Sorry. Okay, I wasn't trying to go to the bank. But then it went ahead and said, you want to add this player to the bad names dot list file. And it went on and worked properly. I also found sometimes the game was spelled food fight with F-I-T-E at the end. And other times F-I-G-H-T. Even within the same game. And as I mentioned earlier, there's some weird underflow or overflows, depending on your perspective, of the money. Here it says we have minus one dollar. And as I start to buy things, you'll see it actually gets further into the negative. But once I was done purchasing and went back to the main menu, it did show the proper amount. So that's quite buggy. And by the way, you can only have up to 500 pieces of food max. And that's a built-in issue. See here it says we have 40,000. So eventually the winner is determined. And the way I did it here was I had a ridiculous amount of food. And I just said throw all food. Boom, I got over 5,000 points. The game stops and you're declared the winner. Now, once the game is won, no one else can play until the sysop resets the game. So here's an example of trying to log in. And you get a notice that Daryl won the game and no one else can play. So the sysop, when they log in, they get this special menu. And they can simply reset the game and everybody can start playing once again. So I hope you enjoyed this review of Food Fight, and I'll see you next time.